Hello beautiful people. Thank you so much for tuning in, watching, and listening. This is going to be the mid-May 2022 tarot reading for the zodiac sign of Taurus. As always, my readings are very intuitive, so I'll provide you any intuitive messages that I receive as well as the meaning of the tarot card. I do, however, recommend you check out your sun, moon, and rising just to get a full picture of everything that's going on for you through the end of this month. Also, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. When you subscribe, that helps me very greatly, and you'll be notified when I post videos in the future. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump in and get started, Taurus. In column number one, we're going to take a look at what's wrapping up and coming to a close, so last few weeks or month for you. Column number two is going to be general look at May, um, specifically the end of May. Column number three is going to be money. We're going to do a love column. And in the fifth and final column, we're going to do a message from our future self or spirit guide. Uh, we're also going to do three yes or no questions. We're going to take a look at your crystal for the month. And we are also going to pull a healing note. Now let's go ahead and jump in and see what we've got going on for what's wrapping up and coming to a close. We have the card expectation. And... Quite frankly, Doris, this goes one way or the other. Either things have been exceeding your expectations these last few weeks, or things have not been meeting your expectations. But let's go ahead and read through here and see what messages we have. <clears throat> the first card that we have is the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is an interesting card. Most often it's a card of self-imposed restrictions. If you take a look at this card, there's swords stuck in all over the ground. With this person, they're blindfolded, their arms are bound down, um, but they could very easily like kind of wiggle back and cut themselves free. I'm going to take a, a guess just taking a look at the spread of cards that likely things have not been meeting your expectations lately, Taurus. Um, but if you're still in this situation, again, this is what's wrapping up and coming to a close. Do make sure that you're not limiting yourself. We're going to clarify that card, though, and see what other messages we have. The next card that we have is the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is very studious, very hardworking. Um, I do get the feeling that you've been having to work for something more than you would have liked. Things have just been more challenging is what's coming through there. And then at the bottom we have the Tower card. The Tower card um, is a card typically of unwanted change. It's just things not working out the way you thought they would or the way you expected them to, Taurus. Um, with the Tower card, it can feel like ruin, disgrace, upheaval. Sometimes it can be violence. Again, it's just not what you wanted. The nice thing with the Tower card, although it's an unwanted change, it does always have a beneficial spin for you. It's something that needed to happen. It happens for the greater good. Um, but again, it's an unwanted change. It's not necessarily something you wanted. It's not the way you wanted things to happen, Taurus. Let's go ahead and clarify this column though and see what messages we've got going on here. For those of you who watched my video before, you know that I love when this happens, when we have the same card on top of each other. It's like the universe saying, I said what I said, I meant what I meant. Um, so I'm going to kind of echo what I said the first time with the state of swords. It is really that self-imposed restriction. So do make sure that you're not limiting yourself um, on whatever situation you're in, whatever you're going through, Taurus, do not limit yourself. The next card that we have is the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles is a very resourceful card. Um, it could be a card of fertility as well. Some of you could be trying to get pregnant and that's uh, taking longer or is a lot harder than you thought it would be. Um, some of you could be like trying to be good with your money and it's just hard. Like you're like, okay, I save $500 and then your car breaks and then you have to spend that $500. Um, again, it's things taking longer than you would have wanted or having to work harder for things than you typically would have hoped. Then at the bottom here we have the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is a card of celebration, family, friends, reunions. Um, if the Tower moment, so a couple different things here. Again, I was saying with the Tower moment, even though it's not the change you wanted, it's that unwanted change, it didn't play out the way you wanted it. It is beneficial to you, Taurus, so this is again confirming that with that Four of Wands celebration. 
This could also be connecting you, though, to friends, family, or triggering some sort of reunion, again, in a very positive way. Now let's take a look at our next column, which is uh, what's going to happen through the end of May. So just kind of a general look at May, Taurus. The next card that we have, summary card, is preservation. Um, when I see this card, I like to tell people, make sure you preserve your time, preserve your energy, possibly preserve your money. Um, it's just like making sure you're being careful, making sure you're using all of your resources in a meaningful and beneficial way. But let's see what kind of cards we have, what kind of messages come out under this card here. The first card we have is the Hermit. And the Hermit is a card with um, meaning like go within for clarity. Um, make sure you're like trusting yourself. This light in the lantern here is the light that's within you. But going within for clarity, going within to make sure that it's serving your greater good, that this is your personal quest, that this is like spiritually making you feel good, emotionally making you feel good, physically making you feel good. Um, make sure you're doing right by you, Taurus. The next card that we have is the King of Cups. The King of Cups is very supportive, very tolerant, very empathetic. Um, this feels odd, but I feel like this is you, Taurus, and I'm getting the message that you may need to be more empathetic than usual. You may need to be more supportive than usual. You may need to be more tolerant than usual. And I'm not saying to us that you're not these things on a daily basis, but this feels like another layer of that. And I'm not sure exactly why that's coming through. Again, with these general readings, I can't know every exact scenario or situation that everyone is in. But I feel like you need to do these things a little bit more this month. Then at the bottom here, we have the Knight of Pentacles. This is very reliable, very patient, very hardworking. This is also you. Um, continuing to stay reliable, continuing to stay hardworking, continuing to stay patient. Again, I'm not saying that you aren't these things already, but these two cards at the bottom here are kind of like saying you're going to have to do a little extra sprinkle of them. But don't conflict that or confuse that with the preservation card at the time because it's still about preserving your energy, preserving your time, preserving your words sometimes. Um, let's clarify this column though and see, see where this takes us. What else can I give you here, Taurus? The first clarifying card we have is the Ten of Wands. The Ten of Wands is a card of stress, exhaustion, having too many burdens. Um, this is really where it's going to tie into the preservation. When I see this card, it's like you need to put down some of these wands. You have all these things going on and it's overwhelming. Too, too, too much going on. Make sure that you're preserving your time, preserving your energy. Make sure that you're serving your greater good. Again, you're doing things that make you feel mentally good and physically good and spiritually good. Um, you can't do that when you're in this stressed, overwhelmed, exhausted state with this Ten of Wands, when you have too many burdens going on. The next card that we have is the Empress. The Empress is a card of creation, a card of abundance. Um, it's also a card of pregnancy and fertility. There's been some pregnancy cards in here already, so definitely some of you could be getting pregnant or you're already pregnant. This could also be grandparent too, like you could be finding out that you're going to be a grandparent. Um, but on the note of the other side of that, that creation and that abundance, it's on top of that King of Cups, which in order to create this beautiful, abundant, healthy, well-balanced, full of energy life, we're going back to the King of Cups that's saying there needs to be support, there needs to be tolerance. There needs to be empathy. Um, and these things are kind of like building blocks, building you up to this much stronger point, to this emperor's point where you can create, where you have that abundance. Um, you can't have an abundance of energy if you're not preserving it, if there's a drain, a trickle out, right? So the next card that we have is the Five of Wands. The Five of Wands is an interesting card. It's a card oftentimes of rivalry, challenges, obstacles. However, they're fighting with wands, they're not fighting with swords. So when I see this as like small bumps in the road. 
And that's again on top of that Knight of Pentacles, which is very reliable, very patient, very hardworking. And this is a reminder that as you hit these bumps in the road, you have to continue to be patient. You have to continue to keep pushing forward and working hard. Stay your same reliable self, Taurus. Now let's take a look at our next column, which is anything related to money. So think job, career, finances, businesses you run, investments you have. Again, anything that you think of when you think of money, Taurus. The first card we have is the Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups is the Prince or Princess Charming card. Think knight in shining armor. Very romantic, very proposal-like. So definitely very much a love card, but it does have a meaning as it relates to money, and that's the column we're taking a look at. Proposal being the word that we're going to hang on here. So there will be some sort of new business proposal, business partnership, some sort of proposal leading to money, job offer, um, opportunity to start your business. So be thinking in terms of proposal in that sense, or it could be a new business relationship, which is wonderful too, new coworker, boss, business partner. The next card that we have is the star card. The star card is a card of renewal, hope, inner clarity. It's almost like a card of feeling like there is a miracle that's happening. You could also be in the spotlight. That's what this big star is in the center here. So you could be getting recognized or again being in the spotlight. Um, but like you have a new outlook on money, Taurus. You have a new outlook on your job. This is renewal, hope, again, inner clarity. So super wonderful energy. Interestingly enough, this is a really wonderful relationship happening with the Knight of Cups, but they don't necessarily feel directly related. Then at the bottom here, we have the Five of Swords. The Five of Swords is a card of not very good relationships. Um, this is that bully, theft, violence, abusive relationships, those kind of toxic relationships. Um, <coughs> these cards however do feel associated so if you have a crappy co-worker a crappy boss um maybe you even have like an investment or financial advisor that is not doing it for you um this is that new relationship which is really wonderful um there's some correction new partnership much better energies we get to scoot away from whatever or whoever this five of swords card is Let's clarify this column and see what other messages we have here. The first clarifying card we have is the Four of Pentacles. The Four of Pentacles is a card of long-term, excuse me, desire for long-term security. Um, and interestingly enough, this Knight of Cups is going to help carry you towards that desire for long-term security. So whether that's a new job offer, business proposal, Again, that's going to unlock that long-term security you've been hoping for. Maybe you need a solid business partner. You need that new partnership, that new relationship. Again, that's going to unlock that long-term security you've been hoping for with that Knight of Cups. The next card that we have is the Wheel of Fortune. For those of you who have watched my videos before, you know I love the Wheel of Fortune. It's one of my favorite cards in the entire deck. It's a card of good fortune, a turning point, good luck. Um, so again, you are at this turning point, which is wonderful. Not to mention this is a great card for luck and money. We love to see that in the money column. But what we were talking about with the star is like this is this renewal, this hope, this inner clarity. Maybe being in the spotlight is taking you to this turning point of being promoted or being able to start your own business. Or maybe you wrote a poem and now it's being published and now you can be a, an, an author. Um, we're just like at this turning point of something so grand. Then at the bottom here, we have the Lover's card. The Lover's card is obviously a love card, um, but it doesn't always mean love. This goes deeper than that. It goes into partnership, the strength between the two of you. Um, and again, we were talking about this Five of Swords relationship going to be correcting itself. I don't know where this person's going or where you're going, but this unhappy poor partnership is ending and we're getting into a really deep quality partnership with the lover's card not all about money but we're looking really good in our money column taurus now let's take a look at our next column which is anything related to love so think family for friends relationships children and let's see what messages we have here 
The first card that we have is the Six of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles is a card of giving or receiving help. Um, and I feel like, I don't, I don't know, honestly, Taurus, which way I feel like this is going. I'm not sure if you will be the generous one or if there will be somebody being generous to you, but I do feel like a deep connection and a, and a good circle of support. So again, this could be you helping somebody that you're close to, family, friends, relationship, or vice versa. We'll clarify that card and see if I can dig a little deeper there. The next card that we have is the Judgment card. So the Judgment card is a card of clarity, um, making a financial, or excuse me, making a final decision, not a financial decision, making a final decision. Um, clarity, though, being the big thing. So you are going to get some sort of new insight or perspective on your relationship or your desire to be in a relationship or your family. Um, I just feel like there's new clarity and perspective coming here. Then at the bottom we have the Eight of Pentacles. The Eight of Pentacles is a card of mastering your craft, enjoying your employment. Um, it's working very hard. It's that work smarter, not harder type energy. But this is a reflection of you and this is saying you're dedicated to your relationship, you're dedicated to your family, you're dedicated to your friends. Um, this is just showing how hard you work for everybody, but in a really positive light. Let's see what other kind of love messages I can give you here. The first card that we have is the Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands is a card of speed, action, quick change, news coming in. Um, again, this is going to be news triggered. So like you're going to hear that somebody needs help or somebody's going to hear that you need help, that you need that generosity. Um, and whatever it is, it's going to happen very quickly. Like you're not even going to be done raising your hand saying you need help and help will be there or vice versa. You're going to see somebody that needs something and you just jump right on it. Um, this feels so prompt and so quick. The next card that we have is the Eight of Cups. The Eight of Cups is a card of withdrawing, retreating, moving on. Some of you could be getting clarity in a relationship and deciding to move on from a relationship. I'm not saying a relationship is going to end for you, but again, there is some sort of clarity. There is some sort of final decision being made. And maybe it's not even like your love relationship. Maybe it's like, an old relationship that you haven't fully processed and you're like, okay, I'm officially ready to move on. Or there's a friend that you've just grown apart from and it's time to move on. And it's not necessarily bad. So when you look at the Eight of Cups, you see these cups are stacked so nicely. So it's not like there's anything bad that's pushing you forward. But again, there's some sort of clarity, um, final decision moving you closer to your kind of purpose or who you want to be, where you want to go. Then at the bottom here, we have the Hierophant. The Hierophant is a very traditional card. It's a card of expectations. We have expectations coming up again. Um, it's very traditional though, too. And I feel like this is such an odd message coming through in the love column this month, Taurus. But I'm gonna give it to you how I'm seeing it. This is like saying that you don't even like think twice except to work hard for your friends and family and for your loved ones. It's like, this is just who you are at your core. Um, it's like traditional for you. It's conventional for you. It's just who you are and the way that you operate. You're so dedicated to those around you, which is a really beautiful thing. Now let's take a look at our fifth and final column, which is a message from our future self or spirit guides. Ooh, we have the card magnetism. I love that. This is what's saying whatever you want, you can attract to yourself. So definitely keep that in mind going into the end of the month, Taurus. Be focused on those things that you want because you get to attract it to you. But let's see here. The first card we have is the King of Swords. The King of Swords is very intentional and very strategic. Be very intentional and be very strategic about what you want, Taurus, because you are attracting it to yourself. So keep that in mind. Again, you're that magnet. You're attracting whatever you want. The next card that we have is the Wheel of Fortune. Again, we had the Wheel of Fortune earlier, one of my favorite cards in the entire deck. Card of good luck, good fortune, turning point. Um, so with the Wheel of Fortune card, 
you're at this turning point of getting whatever this thing is that you've been wanting. At the bottom here we have the death card. The death card absolutely does not mean death. It is a card though of big changes, endings, transformation. So again, we're right on like the cusp of this turning point and it's different from this turning point and you're at all these different turning points in the best possible way, Taurus. Um, you're, at, you're like at the point of going through this transformation of what you have always wanted. But let's see here. The first clarifying card we have is the star card. The star card is a card of renewal, hope, inner clarity. Um, I feel like you didn't even like know that this is possible and here you are about to like physically hold whatever it is that you want in your hand, Taurus, which is really, really neat. Um, and as you continue to attract these things to you, this renewal, this hope, this clarity is just gonna continue to grow. So be intentional, be thoughtful on what you're, what you're wanting. The Four of, Sword, Four of Swords card is next. This can mean multiple things. Sometimes this is saying you need to rest, retreat, recover. In this case, it's saying you are like at the point where you're going to be rested, recovered, renewed. Again, you're at that turning point. You're on that cusp of getting what you want. Then at the bottom here, I would say that this is likely related to money for most of you. Um, the Nine of Pentacles being a card of luxury, self-sufficiency, financial gain. Um, so definitely some financial gain as you proceed through this transformation, as you go past this turning point, as you attract whatever this is that you want to you, Taurus. Now, at this point in time, I'm going to give you the opportunity to ask three yes or no questions. We're going to use the Gypsy Witch Fortune Telling deck. If you don't have three questions in mind, you can pause the video and think of them really quick. But for question number one, we have the Ten of Hearts. This is the number seven card. That's going to be a yes. Question number two is the Ace of Spades. This is number 37 card. That's going to be a no. And for question number three, we have the Seven of Clubs. This is the number 20 card. That's going to be a yes. So yes, no, yes, Taurus. If you watched our video earlier this month, we did pull a crystal from our Healing Stones deck, which is a crystal to keep with you through the month of May. Your crystal for this month is Labradorite. It's good for realism, mediumship, um, helps you see past illusions, gives you great knowledge, and really keeps your mind very, very sharp. We're also going to do a card from our Healing Stones deck to end out our reading here. You will begin to heal when you let go of past hurts, forgive those who have wronged you, and learn to forgive yourself for your mistakes. Thank you so much, Taurus, for tuning in, watching, and listening. Please do like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how this video resonates with you. Again, when you subscribe, that helps me greatly, and you'll be notified when I post future videos. If you feel inclined, I did include my Venmo in the comments box if you'd like it to make a donation. Thank you again, Taurus, and have a wonderful rest of your May.